changes went on in Chicago for some months. First started being just as awful as all the other groups that I had been in and that most of us had been in, in the sense that the ideals of the ideals of uh, non-hierarchy and breaking the old structure and developing an interpersonal closeness and caring about feelings and, and so forth, which were really wonderful in, in every way between people, uh, still produced these horrible meetings of the whole group. And uh, during that period, a lot of people dropped out and there was a lot of hurt. And, and the first change in that that came uh, came accidentally because some uh, people from the north side, the, the Lincoln Park Collective, came down to demonstrate psychodrama to us. And we were still meeting in different people's apartments, which is another thing to, to know not to do. I mean, we didn't have a space, our own space. And as usual, the, uh, the sort of awful meeting was going on in the living room. But by that time, many people had sort of dropped out of that, that kind of a meeting. And they were milling around in the dining room waiting for the psychodrama demonstration to start. And it produced a distinction, which for a long time we called the living room dining room distinction. It produced a distinction between the business meeting, which was going on in the living room, and the uh, demonstration, the psychodrama demonstration, which is going to happen, is going to happen in the other room. And sure enough, during the psychodrama demonstration, we were wonderful. It wasn't just that we were okay because we weren't talking business. We were really wonderful because the whole focus was on feelings being opened and shared, and there were lots of people who wanted to do that and did that really lovingly, and there were all sorts of good things developed. Uh, I remember between them, and then for some <clears throat> for some period of time, I know I went around babbling about the difference between the living room and the dining room, <laughs> sort of unclearly, uh, <laughs> until uh, uh, some period of time later, Kristen and a group, a subgroup of us, definitely not the whole group, uh, Kristen came up with the idea that there should be training. Our instance would be was listening training, but that there should be real training, and that we should spend our main changes meeting time training. And so we developed uh, five people who thought they could teach listening with a little back stopping. And so we had a sort of small group in which we taught ourselves each other listening, and then we had five leaders who took five subgroups, and everybody in changes got trained in listening for about twelve weeks. And what that meant was that the main space of the group, again, was taken up by feeling processes, the kind of processes where you don't have any other agenda except to be with the other human being. And there was absolutely no business, including that there was no decision to do that, which we all felt very guilty about. And we sort of walked in and said, well, let's have this training and divide up and everything else. And we never asked everybody whether they were even willing to go along with that. And what happened to business is that there were some few people who cared about our hotline that we were running. And it would continue to run then for five more years. They cared about that, and they, they uh, continued it. It involved a certain amount of scheduling. It wasn't like heavy business, but it did involve making small decisions. We had to pay the telephone bill every month and get that kind of money. It was a very, very little amount, but still had to be done. And there had to be schedules of who was going to take. We had the evenings divided up into two phases and who was going to work with whom. And there was a considerable amount of small stuff that needed to be done. New people couldn't man the hotline unless they were matched with old people who knew how to do it and this sort of thing. And there was a small group of people who continued that and who also uh, cared about the few other things that had to be decided. And when our 12-week training was over, that small group also had to decide what to do next. Uh, a thing developed out of that 
that during the first, because of our training being that way, it, the structure developed where during the first hour there is some kind of teaching that somebody does. And uh, very quickly that got to be very open so that all different people taught something in that first hour. And then we had our announcement period in the middle where you could say anything if you wanted a mattress or, or an apartment or a friend or listening or whatever. And then there were these small groups. And again, there was a phase of time when some people who, whose small groups were closed had to get past a very heavy, guilty feeling about doing anything closed. There were several groups that were closed in the sense they didn't want any new people coming in. They were doing something in depth with each other. And it was enough that the first section of the evening was totally open, and they wanted it closed. And there were lots of people like that, and still are, who just really come for their closed group. But more than that, a community, a living together community, also developed as a subgroup. And they too felt <clears throat> that they really couldn't start a community except with each other's, you know, with people that you cared about. And yet they felt tremendously guilty and elitist and all these terrible issues about pulling off and getting an apartment together as a community without announcing this to everybody and inviting everybody, which they didn't want to do. And from all that, I feel like we really developed an understanding of a model in which people can really go off and do anything that they need to. A model in which anyone can stand up during announcements and say, I want to do a group teaching about Guru Maharaji. Anybody who wants to come can come. And there needs to be no decision by the group whether doing a Guru Maharaji group is or is not appropriate to changes or whatever. To, you know, people come, then they get to hear about Guru Maharaji, and if nobody comes, then that doesn't happen. That's all. And uh, for all the years from then until I know about at least, there has not been that changes, a decision-making meeting. The only thing that exists is a li the little subgroup that does a business meeting and it does it the hour before the main meeting, sometimes at other times. But everybody knows when it meets, and anybody can be in that. And what you get is a small group of devoted people who know and want to do that. And there are people who also have their feeling processes with each other in the main space, which is to say in the main meeting and also all week. So they are unlikely to do heavy feeling hurting in the little business meeting, which they're really just doing on the side to get the stuff to happen. And I have never been in that, except I think I went twice because of, like everybody else, because something was happening that I cared about, so I went to those two meetings. So I can't really say exactly what that was, but the impression I have is that there very rarely was any uh, tendency to have heavy feelings with each other within the process of that little business meeting because people had much more important relations with each other outside of that little business meeting. So the little business meeting always had the same quality as you get sitting at dinner saying, hey, let's do this and that, or why don't we collect everybody's address or whatever. It didn't have, doesn't have this process. And that model... You're not going to forget what you're going to say, because I, I can see how I can finish this phase pretty quickly. That model has the enormous, enormous advantage, first of all, that there isn't this, what I want to talk about for a minute, this hurtful group process kind of group, where people's feelings are aroused in the context of business or in the context of making trivial decisions. And, and I feel very strongly now that the, one of the powerful things about that model, that simple model that I laid out, just segregating the business, one of the powers of it is that you don't have to have a process in which people's feelings are aroused, but the context is such that you aren't supposed to stop for their feelings because you have business to do or you have a decision to make that that is one of the most frustrating and interpersonally hurtful things that can happen, I believe. And that is a process that I have seen ever since I came to Carl Rogers Counseling Center. And I feel like he had a lot to do with breaking out of the old hierarchical model 
which we all we want to go back to that surely and all of us hurting each other in that process every staff meeting still felt that that was better than the old hierarchical model because at least we were all the same and we really determined together the future of that whole thing and Carl Rogers didn't run it even though he had the grant and the money and so on but something even better is to not go back to the hierarchical thing but not to have that kind of process and I don't know if I'm clear about what I mean by that kind of process what characterizes it for me is that human personal feelings are roused by the interaction but the context is not one in which everybody can totally devote themselves to those human feelings because after all we're supposed to make a decision what are we going to do in half an hour or after all we're supposed to get out a newsletter or after all we're supposed to decide such and such and that might be enough to say about that. The other power of the model, as I feel it, is that it really seriously, and this leads to what I hope will be the second half of what we're talking about, it really seriously um, gets past the power structure. Because if you don't make any decisions, and everyone can do whatever they want, and then the group never has a policy, and the group never has a responsible stand as a group. And therefore, when the outside powers want to get rid of it, they can't. Because it doesn't exist in their terms. So that when Billings Hospital wanted to get rid of changes, there was no way they could do it. They were deeply upset because changes was working with a, with a girl that was then hospitalized in Billings Hospital. And then the parents came to see her, and some changes people talked to the parents and said, you know, if you take the girl out of the hospital, we might be able to work with her, or give her some apartment or something. And that, of course, was the most upsetting thing in the world to the psychiatry department, because can you imagine going against the doctor's role in this situation and talking to the parents and telling them, oh, it was awful. But all the way through the university hierarchy and all the way through the political hierarchy, there was no way to get changes to change its policy because it didn't have one. There was no way to get its building because it didn't own one. And I'm referring there to other things that I have seen start. The free store that started a couple of years earlier, which was closed within three, four weeks for building violations. Uh, the people who have the power have the power very easily to get you as soon as you're part of their structure. But with changes, they can never find who runs it because no one does. And they can never get it to disband because there's no procedure for that. And if they got, got us kicked out of the church we're in, there would be some other church we could go to and don't own anything. And that's only the negative side of the overcoming the power structure. The positive side to me is that it enables anyone to do anything. That the group as a whole has no way to decide that so-and-so can't do therapy or that so-and-so can't talk in the name of the organization. Anybody can go anywhere and tell what changes does. And if you hate it because they have the wrong idea, then you can go also and tell what it does. But you can't stop them, or you can get with them, or you can talk about it, or you can confront them in some way and say, hey, would you listen to me about what I think you're doing bad, and so on. But that's all you can do. And there is this freedom of action that develops. And there is an understanding that when people do things that affect you and you don't like it, that you can talk to them about it and that you can get even third parties to come in and help you with that and so forth. It's not that you're totally helpless about what other people do, but fundamentally there's no procedure to stop them from doing it. And uh, that's all I want to say about that, I think. I hope that there will be some response to this part and we could then maybe raise more, more current questions. I had a question about the planning meeting. Um, the people who made decisions there, uh, this is the way I've understood it, just keeping the history of other people, that if they decided something that, and someone wasn't not there and heard about that and they were upset, then they could come to the next planning meeting and say, that's not all right with me, and those people would have to listen or some new decision could be made. Yes. That that. Right. Uh, and you wouldn't, you would think perhaps that you would go there merely to speak about this thing, but you would automatically be part of the mm -hmm. group that runs it just by walking in the door. Mm -hmm. Just like with these things, anytime the sheer presence of a person constitutes membership, sort of, so that 
you wouldn't just be telling this clique that does everything that you don't like how they're doing, which is the old pattern. You would immediately be part of reconsidering that thing. The other question is, uh, what if someone says they want a group on Guru of Maharishi? Now, in our small changes here, we've been feeling very strongly that we don't want the listening and focusing to just go out the window. You know, with a whole lot of other different groups going on and people not doing listening and focusing anymore. And like a whole lot of Guru Maharishi people coming just for that group and not ever doing listening and focusing as a way of life. Yes, I think that's a helpful question because we had that too. And what we have is there is always a new people's group, which is a listening training group. Mm -hmm. Now in New York we're having to do that over again and it's not too clear because people come from focusing and hear about focusing, so we have some difficulty here. But in Chicago it was always, the new people's group always was a listening training group, a round robin first, you know, first kind of listening training group, always. And every new person was in that. And I think that saved us from this. So that everybody knows listening. Then they may also bring in anything else, but they know listening. How long were they new people? It varies. That's a nice question. Because our, our group is only the first night. Yeah. You see, if That's there were all about. these other little groups, then one night just isn't enough to become isn't a enough. listening person. Yeah. I think you're perfectly right. That's a problem. And it's a problem we have in New York. Mm -hmm. We have it doubly because people come from focusing. Mm -hmm. And focusing is very neat and it certainly goes with listening and everything else, but it's not listening. And listening really is needed to to it's make norm. this norm, yeah, this this underneath baseline on top of which you can have all the other things. So the problem to me wouldn't be to keep the Guru Maharaji people coming, but it is like you say, it's the problem of how to get them to share in the listening. And I know we're using them as an example, but to, mm -hmm. to share in the listening uh, ethos. Mm -hmm. I haven't totally got that, except that the listening ethos is so pervasive in the thing that even if you skip the new people's group and the listening chain, you would get it because it's all over the place. And we haven't got that quite yet in New York, but in Chicago it's always it was sort of like part of the announcements was who needs to be listened to? Is there anybody here who doesn't want to sit still for for all this and who needs listening right away? We used to have a thing where we had somebody, maybe three people on call, have you got that here, who were ready to listen to some stranger who walked in and needed it. Mm -hmm. and Kathy uh, came yesterday at the beginning yes. of the meeting saying, I will be available all day long for anyone who wants yes. for me to listen. Exactly like that. Exactly like that. We used to have them. And another important thing to say there is most of the old changes people come to changes to get something for themselves. And the giving operation of running the new people's group or being available for listening is rotated so that you never go there just to wear yourself out for, for new people. You run the new people's group as long as you want to, sometimes for six weeks in a row maybe, but, but basically it's rotated. From what, this is no, sorry. From what I hear of uh, Chicago now, that they're having trouble with the listening yeah. norm, yeah. that it isn't being part right. of it, and that's what we're afraid right. of here, that we want to keep. Yeah, well, I'm with you. So you, you really uh, said what was, what did, why it happened, when you said, well, a new group comes in and and how you keep that from making it so scattered. And what happens if these new groups start coming in and listening and focusing was one night in a month rather than every night, every Sunday night. And that's it and the whole the rug was pulled out my you know, my analogy, the rug was pulled out from under what changes was by doing that. And so everyone would come and felt very scattered because they had no longer any stability. And the thing about changes is it's such a diverse transient community, you do need some, I feel, some very, uh, some core. Okay. So wait, your analysis of what happened in Chicago that currently makes it a yeah. problem is that listening was somehow relegated to once a month or something? Well, once, or, it's like it was relegated along with the other uh, kinds of therapies or presentations, rather than it being this there every week for as people a, to do. As a new people's training there every week? Or as I didn't, it wasn't there anymore like that. It's like it wasn't there. Yeah, I think that 
that's what's happened. I mean, I, I think I agree with, with both of you. I think that one thing that certainly was what made changes go was that listening as a, yeah, I'm just, as a backdrop. I'm just wanting to reinforce yeah. or to support. May I ask a question? Do they do they do listening for the new people there now? I mean, when a new person comes, do they have to be in the new person's listening group? I didn't. When I came back, I didn't feel it was such an important thing to people anymore. To do that. Well, then you're not we, answering Susan's question. Yeah. I'm not answering you. Do you know? The do you do you know that if a new person comes in Chicago, whether they're whether they have to go to a, whether they have to to a new person's listening for no, they don't have to. But is, is there a new people's group? Mm, I couldn't say that now. I, guess I was I need going. To ask you, you would have to ask Tom, Tom. Tom, right? But that, that's certainly a good thing to look at, that, that the idea of having listening as a basic, as a basic shared thing that then can stand to bring in everything else is a combination that's rare. I mean, usually a group is either sectarian, this is all we do and we do this and this is good and everything else is bad, or else there are some kind of supermarket of total, total uh, you know, anything goes like a humanistic consciousness. But uh, to have something that everybody shares and that gives a kind of underlying openness to each other, and then on top of that, welcome everything else, I think is basic. Yesterday in the group, the small group I was in about training and skills and all that, one of the topics that we didn't get to was leadership, training leaders. Mm -hmm. Now, where are the norms going to come for? I mean, what is a leader in changes in New York oh, versus yes. Vermont? Oh, versus yes. Oh, yes. Well, what like, happens when there's a network, when there's not okay. just changes we don't know. in Chicago? We don't know. And okay, wait, there's three responses I want to make. One is I, I realize I don't fully yet know what you're saying, okay, but it makes me full of things I want to say. So can I say those knowing that I quickly get you? I want to say that one aspect of all this is that anybody can be a leader to whatever extent anybody follows or something. And... That's the first thing to see, that anybody can say, okay, I am now competent to teach such and such, and I'll do it in the next room or something. And That's the, that would be and, the old, that would be the model for Chicago. Yes. Just everyone does what they want. Yes. You go write a book, <laughs> and right. okay, right. even if right. someone over there is writing the exact same right. book. And then I want to say to that that I learned yesterday from Joan's idea, a way because that model has always had a problem, the quality problem. Yeah. Right. right. That's okay. Good. I learned yesterday uh, what seems like the beginning of a free new way. This would get on the second half of what I'd like here, here today. A free new way of doing a quality control trip. If we could say there are two quality control factors here, and so far that Joan came up with just in a sentence, and one of them is we have these five tapes that we keep changing, you know, which are our latest best examples of listening and focusing, and measure yourself against them in any any way you want. I mean, just just stay on top of those so that you would know the latest. And then if you felt you were doing better than that, or if you felt you, that that was fine. And the other quality control thing she suggested was stay in touch, which might mean something structured, like once a year come to a skill sharing or something like that. And if you did those two things, you could consider yourself quality controlled. Now, I don't know that that's the final word, but what I'm excited about is that that's a way of taking the old model where uh, Guru so-and-so or Maharishi or Harvey or somebody elects you as one of the ordained priests, and unless you are ordained, you can't do it. Uh, that would be a way of changing that model. Uh, now, that's only the beginning, but it's... Right, well, it's just beginning. Okay. Now, was that what you were talking about, quality yeah, control? Well, you had yeah, something and more. then also, well, that was the main thing, and quality is the right word, because it has gotten bigger. It's not something that's just happening in one place. Yeah. And we don't know. That. And okay. there does seem to have to be more communication. I'm getting this again from Kathy about projects, yeah. And, it's yeah. so, and I guess meetings are the best way to do that. Right. Um, well, I feel there are problems. Kathy's pointing, for instance, to a problem about the listening, focusing tapes that uh, Gary Stallings is putting right. out. That's, yeah. It's sort of like on our, on our changes model, that's fine. Or, well, he's putting out tapes, good for him. Well, it's us put out tapes, too. But then as we move into the world, that might not be sufficient. Yeah. There is a problem there. It's okay when you're in one place, but not okay when you're in... I don't even know what's going on. Okay, I'm going to reflect that. It's easier to... 
Right. I agree that there are new problems now, and I'd like us to talk about them in a, in a, in a few minutes. So I don't know what the reactions, but then I would like to. I agree that there are new problems. I think you're saying the problems are new because people are dispersed in different Partly. places. Maybe. That's just one. Yeah. I don't, I don't yeah. know. I but there are unsolved problems. Um, but for instance, you didn't know what you're thinking about. And, and I'm not blaming it on you. Okay? Well, this is my fault, though. I well, feel that that's very much my fault. I worked that through yesterday, and I feel really happy about it today. I worked it through with Leon first psychologically and then with Kathy on that content. And it turned out Kathy was willing to listen to me for an hour and a half, just intellectually, not to feelings, just to all this. And I have somehow managed not to communicate this at all. I find it very hard to say, I'm going to hold forth on my concept of this and so, and I'm not good there. You know, David could sit here last night and say, I didn't experience any anything like this in five years, it changes, but I knew that David couldn't have said why. Uh, I may be wrong there. What's that? But in terms of my structural understanding of what we did to make to make that, I think it was in my autistic head, that understanding. I think it just, we did it, and the analysis that I'm presenting, I did not succeed in communicating. I did not succeed in writing it down. I did not succeed in, in, in pushing for everyone to see that analysis. Understand it. And understand it. Now, had I done that, many people could have gone on from it and developed a better analysis. That's always my hang-up. I, I feel as if, oh, I'm coming on like I'm giving the word. But that's my own conflict. Other people know very well that as soon as they hear it, they got another thought. And they're beyond it, right? So I feel like it is my fault. I broke in. I didn't even mean to get into that. I know. I, know. It all I, I wasn't blaming you. So I know. I just was saying that that seems. There's just a whole new set of problems. And communication is one quality. Yes. Who decides what now? It's not just. I don't know that it feels right for New York just to do exactly what. To be autistic, to do exactly what we want. I mean, where is, where is the autonomy? Uh -huh. As a model, I feel like nothing can stop New York from doing whatever it wants, but then we hope that we want to stay in touch and hear from everybody else. Something yeah, like that. As a model, the model consists in this very notion that you don't have to have the whole group decide that New York can do such and such, that it can do whatever it wants to do, and the understanding of the model is that communication is all you expect. So if someone doesn't like what we did, then certainly we need to hear about that. But that we wouldn't that it wouldn't be appropriate to say you all went ahead and started this and so on, you didn't let us know. That that is not the understanding. The old the old model is to have the sort of central yeah. centralization and that's what I don't want to happen anyway. Or that if you come together as a central that means that you're all going to have to go away with this we're all going to do it all over the United States that way. That's the old model. Right? Yeah, but if this if, if this conference is going to, uh, if its, pur its purpose needs to be that, okay, you can share some skills, but then you go back with that and do your each individual thing. The other point I wanted to make was my understanding as to why it works is that it just happened to me again in this meeting. Some feeling just got touched off, and I started to cry. And I know that what I need now is to have a, a couple people or one person to go off and be with me with yes. this. Because yes. I know that I don't know if anyone can stop a chain effect that goes on when you have an emotional place or, or you need some support. Now, maybe that's where I'm at in my life now and I can't stop it or I can, but sometimes you just don't want to. Right. And you can't just let... And so you need a place to, to be able to do that. And that's the function of what I say taking, it's not really taking the feeling process out of the meeting because it started there. But it doesn't mean just because it started there, yeah, that right. whole group has to deal with it all. Or just because one relationship started something means that that one person gets the whole of that. That's right. Thing. Everybody now has to. Yeah. And now I'm finally understanding that. Yeah. I mean, but I needed, the thing is, Gene, I needed your support yesterday. I mean, if this is, I hope I'm not, I needed your support, yeah, I needed your support yesterday to tell me, just when I was in the goal to this old group, here I was being sucked into the old model. Go to the whole thing again. Go to the government's Jimmy Carter and think I'm going to get a personal touch. The minute I, as I hit Washington, D.C., you know, there's no way. But... That's the old model. 
you know, the new one is, wait, David, you need a couple sharing. And this is what he told me just before I walked down here. I said, I said, oh, and being, I, I trust you. I said, all right, I think I'll do it. I, just, I tried to see, well, does that fit? And, I, and then it did. And somehow it did. And I went to the meeting last night and said, I have this anger with you, you, you. And then I said, but however, I think I need a small group to work that through. And was the, that was just what I needed to do. And I mean, I'm not saying it's going to have to be that way every time. Yeah, that feels like a beautiful example, so, because then one is so free, like we went in there and we didn't have anything to be concerned about yeah. except David. Newsletters. And it was just and clear, no newsletters and also no interfeeling things, because all we went in there for is to do with David, and it was, yeah. and nothing happened complicated between me and Kathy and Bob and, and Tom. We were just... We were just concerned with David, and, and it's so it was so good to be able to do that. Instead yeah. of always feeling like, "Oh, David, I care about you, but you're right. taking up all the time or some shit." And there's, well, there's another there's another thing too, like relative the feeling and the, and the business thing. <clears throat> of the business thing doesn't have to get missed. It's like if you do really have a stake there. Right. The nature of it is that it's changing. So if if they got to somewhere that. that if your feelings missed you a being able to contribute, you can go back and right. everybody can come back I together on that decision. That's right. When I'm in the feeling, I can't hear anything. I mean, that's why I couldn't, I didn't answer your question just before. I was, I started getting, I mean, before I asked a question, but I had the question, or when you, before you asked me the question, I started getting into this feeling, and then all of a sudden, David, all of a sudden this question comes into my head, and my reader thinks, oh, I have to answer it. Yeah. Not saying, I'm feeling bad right now, I can't answer your question, which would have been the real real thing for me to say. Mm -hmm. I get into this place of, well, I have to answer your question, not get into my feelings. Willie said an important point in but, between. Yeah. Two, can, can I say his? Or yeah, I couldn't you, hear it because I can't. Okay. okay. Yeah, Wait, I have, David, you said that you needed to go off now yeah. or somewhere. Oh, I do need that. Yeah, I still need. I to. feel need for you to make a decision. Yeah, I'm gonna. I want to do that. So, I have a, if anyone doesn't want to do this in this group, I'll go to the other group and ask. So that's what I do want to do. Now. I'm liking that you did it because I do need some support. I there. feel like there's always somebody in the group who's willing. If I would be, if no one else was. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Does okay. And then you get a person who wants to be with you, which is so infinitely wonderful compared to. Another thing. Is the other, is there oh, wait, could you hold on a second? Willie said something, and I want to bring it out if I could. That you're saying since the little business group's decisions are not final and they're not binding, it doesn't matter so much if you miss it. Like whatever we do here is not binding on anyone. We're not a group to decide policy or organizational philosophies. I mean, so it's okay for David and Eileen to miss that since they can always come back later and say, hey, you forgot this, or we don't like that. But and there's actually right? a way to find out what it was that happened, too. Yes. What it was that happened and how you can change it or add to it. Right. Sorry. Well, I'm just trying to get clear. It seems like there's three models. There's... Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, because I'm including cat, whatever is right. the going on in this whole process during business. Well, let me say again. That's like a third. Right. It's, a, no. it's prejudiced. Let me say it my way. Or, my, but you, I, both. Okay. I want to say it my way and I want to hear what you're going to say. I, my concept is there is the old model, which is the hierarchical model. That consists of a small clique that makes all the decisions and has all the power, and you can't be in it. You can't find it. And you can't know what happens. Then there is the participatory democracy model, which is the one that, in spite of all its pain, at least gets out of the hierarchy. But it's that awful model where every decision takes this grinding, horrible process. And then the changes model seems to me like the third of that, where you have something that looks a whole lot like the old model because you have a small group that makes all the housekeeping decisions. But now you know when it meets and you can be a member of it anytime you want for as long as you want. And it leaves the middle space again, uh, free again. Now that's my concept, but I would like to leave room for thinking that, that Kathy or anybody else has well, further innovations. The way you describe that meeting was, was that when you were doing that stuff 
stuff with Rogers. He said it was so painful and all this. Yes, and then all through all through the fifties and sixties. It would be processing feelings the whole time. Yes. Oh, now I'm feeling it. For like 18 years or something, I was in groups like that. They're all different kinds, political kinds and, and, and psychological kinds, and they were all the same. And I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Is that all right for me to yeah, keep, say all that? Or? Yeah, I'm just kidding how I don't like that model. Yeah, well, that, that model is definitely bad, okay? That we're all agreed on. What we're saying, though, is that it's possible that people might have developed still different third models. And I'm just trying to leave that open. But this middle one from the 50s and 60s, we all know it's bad. I think it killed the, the whole student movement. It was this awful thing where you would spend all night trying to decide and any of the alternatives would have been fine with everybody. And now that it changes way has that. It's like the little group that made the decision comes in and says, today we're doing such and such. And they don't say, are you willing do you agree? Because then instantly 20 creative people come up with 20 alternatives and they hurt each other about them. You just say, this is what we're going to do. And if anybody doesn't like it, then maybe they decide to go to this little group that plots the next day or something. And that's all. Or they go out in the hall and do their own thing because they don't want to be part of this. And it changes no matter what the program is. There are always some people in the hall, which is nice. Because when you don't like what's happening, you go out there, there's other people there. But so the middle model is clearly bad, and I want to be sure, since this is on a tape, that I leave room for whatever has been developed by other people, that maybe there is a way of doing it that isn't hurtful or whatever. I don't mean to maybe do the last word on, on anything. Were you going to say something? Um, first, getting back to that, I, I, the last thing you said, I had it, felt like you were saying the second model even though it hasn't always worked, it, it still can be explored again. Is oh, that what yes. you were saying? Oh, yes. Yeah. Sure. And that there's... And that that's... Sure. And, and the other thing was um, that from before you were kind of labeling Kathy's what Kathy was putting out here and I'm... Right. I'm not sure as... I didn't want to do it. Uh, I, I was thinking Pam even was calling Kathy's too. I don't know what to call Yeah, what happened well, it wasn't here. that. I'm not sure that the Kathy's it's thing. Bursty my, 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 <laughs> oh, yes. I really need to say okay. that I think that the whole thing got screwed up because I think Kathy and Zach and Tom called this to be the planning meeting of Changes International, like the 6 o'clock meeting. That's what I was saying. Oh, That's okay. What... And that people never realized that when they got the brochure, that it wasn't clear enough, and that people came expecting more than a planning meeting, and so that never got clear until maybe... Well, and Kathy never so. made that clear. That's what, that's what I was... Right. I was okay. going to bring it to right here, yes. that, and then that. also to the... Okay, that, that's complicated. Let me... Uh, let me find. I learned that also last night from Kathy, and so I'm, I'm reflecting you or saying it for myself, but I understand that Kathy intended or the conference planners intended for all the conference meetings to be the little business meeting rather than a mixture that the intention was that that's not quite yet what you meant no that okay yes, I, maybe I'm not clear here but the overall purpose of this particular conference to, was to take up all those topics that never seemed to get planned at conferences and that like there's a conference now for skills that that would be like the seven o'clock to nine thirty part of a regular changes at that conference mm -hmm. that there wouldn't be expected and that people and I think the way they have that set up now is better you know I think we went through a lot of pain to get to that that the people interested in that would come a day early mm -hmm. that people need more than four days of planning no I think that, that all of that misses See, I think if they come a day early, they're only going to hurt each other. I'm, hmm. uh, I see now that I have more on this I want to make clear. A large group cannot make decisions is the way I would sum up the whole thing. So even if, if this little business group happened to get very large, then you would have to either divide it into small groups. Now, the fastest way that I know to get the changes pattern is to have alternatives. Like... If the only thing the group is doing is working on a newsletter, then everybody has to be in that. Like yesterday in our newsletter subgroup, we still had at least one person who didn't care about newsletters. 
he didn't want to be in the other group. He didn't care about that either. So he was with us in the newsletter group. That meant that when he had feelings, you know, they, that he wasn't into the newsletter. So even though you say the people who want business come a day early, if a lot of people come, there still needs to be some system where perhaps listening and focusing is going on in that room and business is going on in this room so that people can choose. And those who choose to do business get to do it and can go in the other room whenever they wish. Okay, so you're saying that it can't work on this big interchanges system like a small changes meeting, that right. it's Im right. that's impossible, right. that something has to be worked out, that it's only a small group somehow deciding. Somehow, to and a self-selected group some way. And that's where the hook comes that's in. That's right. Self-selected right. group. Right. I, yeah, right. I, saw wasn't, it, yeah. I saw that it wasn't totally even necessarily size, but the... the um, the involvement was, I mean, it could be larger as long as the involvement was there. Yes. You know, as long as yes. the smallness wasn't necessarily in numbers, but the smallness was in focus mm -hmm. and interest. I think you it said had to be right. an, you, know, you had to right. be focused in this. Like if you said listening and personal process is going on in the next room and business is going on here, and if 30 people stayed here and three people went next door, that would still solve it. But those would be... That would, mm -hmm be the difference. And then as David said, then if things do come up, that one personal process that would move out. Yeah, or the I, other way. Somebody can stand up and say, all those who really want to talk about the newsletter now come with me. And then three people would come and they would really do that. That's the only way it works. And it's something about the process is like that. So that the purpose, may I grant you that the purpose was not clear to everybody. But even if it had been, I think it would have been the same. Because there is no way to make the decision of what shall we talk about today? Which item shall we take up? Which item shall we take up first? How shall we deal with the list on the wall? How shall we divide up into groups? I mean, every time someone asks that question, there goes a half an hour of hurt process. And that's what you don't do. You decide, whoever's running the conference decides at dinner in the corner what the plan will be for the next meeting. And it's understood that anyone who wants to take part in that can have their dinner in that corner. That's, the, you know, if you sort of huddle in between meetings to plan the next one. But everybody is, is welcome to the huddle. But there's an alternative. The alternative is to eat dinner in peace with your friends. That way, most people elect to eat dinner in peace. And one or two people are very concerned with planning the next meeting of the evening. And they go. And that, it's always, I don't know how to get quite into one sentence, it's always the principle that if the people who really want to do the housekeeping select themselves out, then it happens really easily. I want to say another issue a little bit. The whole notion of planning, I think, is already not my sense of the changes model. That somehow you don't plan, you do things. And I realize that that's, that's not said clearly because of course you have to plan when to have conference or what's there. But <laughs> the point is, you just go and do. And the spirit of planning is still this old notion that, well, we all have to inform each other and agree before we can do anything. So we have to have a planning meeting. We have to keep it structured or organized or unified or whatever. And that to me is, is uh, still that that middle model where we all wanted to be free, but we were taught somehow that if anything was done without our say-so, that we were being humanly ignored. And, and in that ethos, of course, once you say to me, gentlemen, you should be consulted before every decision, then when people go off and make decisions without me, it, it means that they don't value me. They think they can discount me. But it's part of the structure. And then you have to have a lot of planning because you have to inform everybody, you have to hear from everybody in advance and stuff. And I don't mean that to be responsible. It just came to my mind that the whole notion of planning really belongs still to that meeting. And once I understand that people can go and do things, and, and if they hadn't thought of me, that's not any insult to me. 